violence breaking out at a massive Jews for Trump rally in New York City. Take a look at this. The video shows rioters throwing rocks at a Trump caravan. They're standing up there on top of the overpass. Other protesters record themselves chucking eggs. The massive convoy of vehicles stretched for miles. The president's lawyer and former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, right there in that SUV spotted at the parade, uh, they threw eggs at him as well and hurled expletives. Seven people were arrested after fights broke out in Times Square. The New York City Police Department is investigating. Let's bring in Ben Shapiro, the host of The Ben Shapiro Show and author of How to Destroy America in Three Easy Steps. He joins us live right now from Nashville. Uh, ben, good morning to you. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, we were talking to Dan Bongino. We, we showed the same video where people uh, took pictures of themselves uh, hurling the eggs at the cars and whatnot. And he said, where is the outrage over this? He said, these are clearly anti-Semitic attacks, and yet there, there does not seem to be much coverage of that element. Well, as long as anti-Semitism is subsumed under a broader rubric of being anti-Trump, it's basically okay. As long as it's subsumed under a broader rubric of being of the left, it's okay. I mean, there's a reason that the Democratic Party continues to welcome and champion Rashida Tlaib and Ohan Omar, who are both anti-Semites. But, I mean, to make this obvious, if this were a Jews for Biden convoy and Trump supporters were hurling eggs and hurling rocks, how long do you think it would take the media to label the people who are hurling the eggs and hurling the rocks anti-Semites? Mm. Ben, what if uh, President Trump does win? What happens in all these cities? I mean, I, I think the cities burn. I think, I think things get extre extremely rough if, if President Trump wins. And I think that they've, they've made that fairly clear. I mean, that Joe Biden himself has suggested that the only way to bring some sort of end to the conflict in the cities is for him to be elected president of the United States. There's been sort of a tacit blackmail that's been enacted on the American public where everybody knows. I mean, Trump supporters, Biden supporters, their belief is that everything sort of calms down. Well, you know, the other side of that is that things absolutely do not calm down if Trump is reelected. And we're talking about blue areas where Trump is not going to be voted for. And I think what you're I think you're going to see massive unrest if Trump wins. All right. So 100 uh, percent right. And they've got a total pass on that. And there's a reason why the uh, most police for most uh, police agencies, precincts are uh, endorsing the president. Uh, meanwhile, I always say to myself uh, before I make any major decision, what would celebrities do again? <laughs> I find myself doing that again today. So I, I queued up this tape and I'm just going to take notes. Let's listen. <laughs> Vice President Biden and Senator Harris are the best choice to lead our country and I am endorsing them to become president and vice president of our United States. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will help us finally bring America together. These days it's always red state, blue state, the me state, you state. I think that Joe Biden believes in the United States. You're that role model for so many young women. I've known Joe since 2006 and I know what kind of a amazing person he is well, i'm voting for joe biden i like joe all right so mel brooks too but does this remind you of before you comment ben remember hillary clinton i kept this on my vcr <laughs> i want my daughter to grow up seeing a woman lead our country and that is why i'm with her i'm with her i have to say i'm with her go out and vote for hillary clinton i'm with her i'm with her I'm with her because she's the most qualified person to hear all of our needs. I'd like to introduce to you the next president of the United States, Ms. Hillary Clinton. So that didn't work out too well. What about now, Ben? Have we changed? Do we like celebrities more now? The celebrities will save us. I mean, when I'm looking for life <laughs> wisdom, the place that I go is to the, uh, the home of, of high-level drug use, divorce, and, uh, and virtually every other sin that you can name. That, that's, that's where I tend to, to look, is to the celebrity class. These are, these are definitely our intellectual superiors, people who should be advising us on virtue and, and the way forward for the republic. These are, these are all the folks that I have traditionally relied upon for all life advice, so certainly I care about how they want me to vote. Right. I've listened to your show. I don't think you're telling the truth. Yeah, probably not. Uh, you know, Ben, speaking of Hollywood, uh, a couple of months ago, you decided, you know what? I've had it up to here with California and the terrible go governance and, and how uh, a, a business like yours is regulated to death. You have since relocated to Nashville, Tennessee. This is the first time you've been on our show from your Nashville studios. Bring us up to date. What sort of fallout was there from you announcing you were going to move, and now that you're there, how do you like it? 
I mean, there, there was a lot of fuss. And, and to be fair, so my entire company is moving to Nashville. My family moved to South Florida with kind of a small contingent. And so we have sort of a, a couple of different spots we moved to, both red states or at least purple states, because California is a trash heap. I mean, I lived my entire life in California, literally all of it, until the last three months. And the reason we moved is because of bad governance. Yes, the, the weather in mm -hmm. California is really nice. But then it turns out that if you raise the taxes to a point where nobody wants to do business, create a regulatory scheme where businesses are basically on the edge all the time. When you regulate everybody down to the point where you can't run your business and you are supposed to subject yourself to these extraordinarily high taxes for zero public services, everybody's going to leave. And that's what you're seeing. You're seeing a mass rush for the exits in California. I mean, the, the local problems in, in L.A. are extreme. Uh, crime is rising, low-level crime particularly. Uh, homelessness is at an all-time high. We have some 65,000 homeless people living in L.A. County. Mm -hmm. And so eventually businesses are going to say, OK, I'm paying all these tax dollars. I'm getting no public services. We're out. And so not only did we leave, we told all of our employees they're welcome to come with us. We thought we'd lose half of our employees. Nearly all of them said, we can't wait to get the hell That's out. That's great. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're pretty excited about it. And, you know, uh, I, I will say that for businesses, red states uh, greater than blue states, no question. And it's everything's still closed. Yeah, oh, well, that, that's definitely a problem. I mean, California, everything still remains incredibly locked down. Mm -hmm. The same is not true in Nashville. It's not true in South Florida either. Because it turns out that if you want to run a business, if you want to live your life, you can't live in a heavy blue state where all of the incentives, politically speaking, are for the government to lock everything down and then blame Trump. Right. Well, Kamala Harris from that state, she praised L.A.'s mayor for slashing the LAPD's budget by $150 million. And Nora asked her about her progressive socialist stance and policies and the way she's voted in the past. Watch this. What I will do, and I promise you this, and this is what Joe wants me to do, this was part of our deal. I will always share with him my lived experience as it relates to any issue that we confront. And I promised Joe that I will give him that perspective and always be honest with him. And is that a socialist or progressive perspective? No. <laughs> no, it is the perspective of, of a woman who grew up a, a, a black child in America, who was also a prosecutor who also has a mother who arrived here at the age of 19 from India, who also, you know, likes hip hop. <laughs> like, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, I want to give you, I want to give you that. She really didn't answer the question. She went into her background instead of talking about, look at your voting record. And I was glad Nora pressed her on it. She said um, that she, she was talking about how she's been labeled as the most liberal senator. And she said, well, that's not true. Pence has actually said that on stage. And Nora said, no, actually, the nonpartisan GovTrack called you the most liberal senator when you look at your voting record. I mean, I don't know about you, but I found all of that absolutely hysterical. Kamala Harris, I would love to play poker with Kamala Harris because <laughs> she has the most obvious tell in the history of politics, which is, which is if she's asked a question she does not want to answer, she breaks into that insane joker laugh. And it's it's pretty wild. I mean, there is nothing funny about that question. And there's nothing funny about the follow up about her being a liberal senator. She broke into that laugh again. I mean, that, that is that is the most obvious tell that I've ever seen in American politics. And it's it's pretty amazing. Yes, Kamala Harris is, in fact, the most liberal senator in the United States Senate by nonpartisan sources. And the fact that she wasn't even prepped for that question demonstrates how easily the media have treated the Biden-Harris campaign thus far, because that is the most obvious question to ask Kamala Harris. You're a wild leftist. You've been a wild leftist your entire career in the United States Senate. So how do you think people are going to think that you're going to govern if you're elevated to the presidency, since Joe Biden seems to be at, on his last legs? There's very little doubt he's not going to serve a full eight years at the very least. And she didn't have an answer for that, which, again, when you believe that you are guarded by the Praetorian Guard of the media and never have to answer a single serious question, you can just go mm -hmm. into the crazy laugh and hope nobody asks you a follow-up. Yeah, one thing I've never seen is I've never seen one side just not do almost anything and the other side do everything. Uh, ben, thanks so much. Look forward to your podcast and your radio show later today.